Hi, I'm Marwan Kari. I'm one of the associate editors on the General Rheumatology, and I'm discussing the three cases of the day that were presented at ULA 2014 in Paris. Case one is a 61-year-old woman with rheumatoid arthritis who developed a painless right index finger, and you get these four images associated with it. And the differentials include aggressive rheumatoid nodules, a fibrosis tumour, or a pigmented venodular synovitis. Um, the rheumatoid nodule is not the right answer because you will get, you will get extensive surface modulation if you see this. And you can, as you can see, this involves the bone and therefore can't be a nodule. Pigmented venodular synovitis usually just involves the synovial surfaces and not the entire bone. So, as you can see from the histology and the radiology, this is the bony lesion. And therefore the answer is a fibrosis uh, pseudotumor, which is a fairly benign lesion that you can get in patients with rheumatoid. It's rare, and treatment is just by local excision. Case two is a 67-year-old woman with a 24-year history of rheumatoid arthritis who got headache, gait, and speech disturbances, and had bilateral lower motor neuron facial palsy and mild retinopheresis. And the image that accompanies this shows a fairly large lesion encroaching on one of the ventricles in the brain. And uh, the differentials here were quite complicated because one of the things that wasn't mentioned in the case was that this was a patient in adlimumab. An and therefore you have to think about either developing a lymphoma or developing an opportunistic infection. Um, the options are a central nervous system lymphoma, glioblastoma or, or toxoplasmosis. Um, it's not a glioblastoma multiforming because it's nice and rounded and the, and the margins of it are fairly well circumscribed. Uh, so the differentials will therefore lie between a CNS lymphoma and toxoplasmosis. Uh, this patient was on adlimumab and the answer was toxoplasmosis but this was diagnosed on biopsy. And so anybody who said it was a lymphoma is probably not too far off from the right differential diagnosis. But the final answer is C, toxoplasmosis. Case number three is a 43-year-old woman with known SLE with positive antiphospholipid antibodies and nephritis and maintenance therapy with oral steroids and azathioprine and cyclophosphamide. Uh, presented with acute diffuse abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting. And you get an image here of a CT scan of the abdomen. And the differentials are abdominal tuberculosis, azathioprine-induced pancreatitis or mesenteric vasculitis. And if you actually look at the scan, what you see is you see bowel wall thickening, you see some amount of attenuation of the blood vessels, and you see the rejection in the amount of fat. And these are all classic features of mesenteric vasculitis. And um, if you, the, it can't be any uh, as a therapy induced pancreatitis because the amount is highlighted are in the, in the blood vessel wall. Abdominal uh, tuberculosis would usually affect the the lymph nodes, and you can see that there's not an lymphadenopathy that's been identified. And so the answer is that of a mesenteric vasculitis.